Welcome back to Paranormal Phoenix. Um, first off, I'd like to start by apologizing that I wasn't able to adhere to the one video per month announcement that I made on my last video um, due to work schedule and some side projects I have going on. Uh, my time has been pretty constrained. I haven't been able to really have enough free time to do videos for a while. Um, I am going to start putting more time towards making videos. It probably won't be one a month, but I'm going to try try to do as many as I can, as often as I can, but it's just been kind of hectic for me. Now, for those of you who don't know about Spring Hill Jack, um, he's a legendary figure that first appeared back in October of 1837 in London, England. Um, he actually, his first appearance officially was in Clapham Common, which the report states that a young lady by the name of Mary Stevens, who worked as a servant in Lavender Hill, uh, was on her way home, back to her job from her mother's, I believe it was, yeah, she was visiting her parents, um, and when she was going through Clapham Commons, she was passing an alleyway. Well, as she passed the alleyway, a dark figure jumped out in a large cloak and grabbed hold of her. Now, the shock of him grabbing hold of her and just his touch pretty much paralyzed her. She couldn't move. And he started kissing her and trying to tear her clothes off with his claws. And she said every part of his body that touched her felt like as cold as a corpse, is the way she described it. Uh, cold and clammy as those of a corpse, is the way she described it in the uh, statement. Um, cold and clammy as those of a corpse, is the way she worded it in her statement. Well, as she, he attacked her, and she finally somewhat managed to come back to her senses from shock, she started screaming for help, which is what caused people to run towards them and for him to disappear. The very next day, a figure, dressed the same way, same mannerisms, jumped out in front of a carriage driver, causing the driver to swerve and crash, and he severely injured himself in the accident. Um, several witnesses to this occurrence said that the figure, thus from this experience being named Spring Hill Jack, disappeared by leaping over a nine foot wall and disappearing. Um, several other reports came in from the next year in February, on February 19th and February 28th of 1838. Uh, two separate young ladies were attacked. One was attacked right outside of her home because that story goes that there was a knock at the door. She was responding to her father's front door to see who it was. She heard a man's voice through the door say, it's a police officer. We've caught Spring Hill Jack in the alley or in the lane rather. We've caught Spring Hill Jack in the lane. Please bring a candle. She grabs a candle, runs outside. As she makes it outside, there's a figure in a large cloak standing in front of her. She hands the candle to him, thinking that it was a police officer, and he spins around. His eyes are like red balls of fire, as she stated. He was spewing blue flames out of his mouth and wearing some sort of helmet. As he grabs hold of her, she reports that his hands have claws on them instead of regular hands. And she said the way they felt, it was of some sort of metal. Now, aside from the claws, uh, the report continues that um, she managed to get out of his grip and started running back to the house. He ended up catching her right on the porch of the house and cutting up, clawing up her shoulders and neck with his claws, cutting her up pretty good. She was screaming for help, and one of her sisters came through the door to see what was going on, and that's when the creature fled by jumping over their fence. Um, now, the third report happened nine days later, like I said, on the 28th of February of 1838. Um, in this incident, two young ladies that were sisters were walking home, and they were traveling through an alley, Green Dragon Alley, I believe is the name of the alleyway. Um, as they were going to turn a corner, they could see ahead, and there was a, someone standing with a large cloak in one of the turns in the alley. As they got closer, the man spun around 
and spewed the blue flames that had been reported from the previous encounter into the young lady's face, which blinded her, causing her to drop down and have convulsive seizures, which continued on for quite a while afterwards. Um, now, by quite a while, I'm not sure if they were referring to for days or weeks later, or if it was just for the duration of the evening for a while. I'm not sure about that part. Um, after those occurrences, the sightings started to get more and more infrequent. Um, let's see, I actually have a list of dates. Um, after that, the next reported sightings of Spring Hill Jack started in November of 1872. Um, and at that point, he was nicknamed the Peckham Ghost. Um, in April and May of 1873, he started appearing in Sheffield, nicknamed the Park Ghost. And then in autumn of 1877, in Newport Arch in Lincolnshire, he was spotted again. Um, now, I'm not sure if there were multiple sightings in the same time frames or if it was just one sighting and then he disappeared again. That was not made clear on any of the reports or research I've been able to do thus far on this. Um, the next occurrence happened in 1888 um, in North Liverpool. He was spotted on the rooftop of St. Francis Xavier's Church on Salisbury Street. Um, he disappeared for a while and reappeared once more in 1904 on William Henry Street, also in Liverpool. Um, after this sighting, it's kind of spotty if he was seen anymore, up until 1938, when this creature, or entity, whatever you want to call it, was spotted in Silver City, New Mexico, his first non-UK-based appearance followed the same year, shortly after, by an appearance in Cape Cod, Massachusetts, his last non-UK uh, appearance. Um, in the 1940s, he was seen again, this time in Wales. And then in the 1970s, he was spotted in Addercliffe in Sheffield. Uh, he was spotted near South Herefordshire in 1986. Um, he was spotted in 2005, but no matter how much research I've done, I have not been able to find out where that sighting happened. It might have been in Herefordshire or Sheffield, which that seems to be his common haunt besides London. Um, but it's an unknown location in 2005. And then he was spotted... Let me see, i got to pull up this correct page to get the actual information. I apologize. Um, his most recent and last sighting thus far... Um, there was a family in a taxi on the way home to Banstead from uh, Stoneley. They were traveling on the Yule Bypass, and the father who was recounting the story for this article, was a, he's a manager of a building company, so fairly reputable. He said that we were driving down the Yule Bypass uh, near... What is it? They were getting close to do, 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 Nescott College. So anybody who knows that area kind of has a vague idea of what I'm talking about. Or you can maybe look up pictures of the area so you can see for yourselves. Um, they were on the way on the Yule Bypass towards, well, coming from Stoneley in a taxi. And up ahead they noticed a man on the far side of the road from them. And they didn't pay a whole lot of attention to the guy until they noticed he was crossing the far lanes of traffic. Once he cleared the median, that's when things took a bizarre turn. In their report, they said a two second span. It might've been longer, you know, just giving estimates for just shock. It might've seemed like two seconds, but it might've been a little longer. But they said within an unnatural amount of time, basically, he cleared all the lanes of traffic on their side of the road and cleared a 15-foot embankment on the side of the road and disappeared from sight. This being the most recent report, like I said, from 2012, February 2012 to be more specific, um, there have been no more documented or r documented reports that I have come across. And to be completely honest about it, Spring Hill Jack has been one of my uh, pet projects that I've been working on trying to figure things out about. Um, for the 
over a decade. Um, I think I first encountered Spring Hill Jack story back in, I want to say, probably late 90s, early 2000s. Um, actually, I would probably say early 2000s, like 2002, 2003. And I've been very interested in the story since and been trying more and more to find additional cases and reports. Um, all the stories have at least some similar factors, which granted with the almost 200 years that the sightings have been going on, there have been copycats. There are some reports, like I have a note on here, that um, in 1843, there were sightings of someone dressed in a large cloak with oilskin clothes, as it was described Jack wore in his original sightings back in uh, 1837-38, and having a helmet with horns and skull caps and things like that. However, it was later found out that one of the uh, captains, a uh, Captain Finch, was later convicted of crimes of assault on women while dressed in these clothes, making people think Spring Hill Jack was paying a visit to the area. Uh, in Teganmouth is where this occurred. Uh, he was convicted, or, yeah, in July of 1847, a Spring Hill Jack investigation was launched, which is when they captured Captain Finch. Because the initial attacks happened in 43, however, he was not captured until 47. Because from 43 on, there were attacks on women. Um, so, there have been some copycats, which could be the case in some of these other instances. But in a lot of these reports, there are either the red glowing eyes or the blue flames in the mouth. That's the biggest similarity to all these reports which I don't have the actual documents on. I did find more reports of the uh, New Mexico and Massachusetts uh, appearances. I do remember seeing on some website somewhere that the blue flames in the mouth and the high jumping were seen in both of those accounts, but I could not find the exact reports from those encounters. I will try and find them and maybe put an addendum video to this one later on, uh, or I'll just copy and paste links into the description. I will give a link in the description to the Wikipedia page where ma the majority of this information came from, as well as another site. All of these different elements, the blue fire mouth, the alleged red eyes, the between nine to 15 foot jumping ability, um, definitely don't seem to indicate any sort of physical creature that I've heard of, any other cryptid which I have tried to do some cross-referencing of other additional cryptid sightings in the areas where these sightings occurred. Um, the closest thing I could come up with as far as a possible um, additional sighting of anything similar, and this is a really far-fetched stretch, uh, would be the Massachusetts sighting in Cape Cod. The closest thing I could find to that would be the Jersey Devil from New Jersey. Not too terribly far, red glowing eyes, flies, jumps. It's a stretch, but that's the closest similarities I could find as far as additional cryptid sightings. Um, there have been no additional sightings that I can find. Now, I was just sitting here rereading some of this article, and I noticed the uh, details that I forgot about from the 2005 occurrence. Like I said, there's still no location listed but multiple people witnessed this figure at multiple different times is the way it reads, at least. Which, like I said, the link to this page, as well as the Wikipedia page, will be in the description. Um, it says, the sighting resumed once again in 2005. Witnesses described the figure they assumed was Spring Hill Jack as being clad entirely in black, wearing a baklava and a cape, and having glowing red eyes. Furthermore, the creature was able to cross the streets by leaping from one rooftop to the next with his outline being barely visible, taking acrobatic leaps that, according to reports, could be of up to 5 meters high and 10 meters long. Police received hundreds of reports of the creature, with the witnesses not seeing his face but only seeing his eyes. The one resident shot at Spring Hill Jack at close range, but the creature didn't even slow down. That is 
almost word for word verbatim to this article on the site. Now, the biggest thing about Spring Hill Jack, uh, there have been a lot of connections that have been drawn or attempted to be drawn between the initial reports of Spring Hill Jack and Jack the Ripper, which nobody's been able to confirm or deny. But, you know, it's, it, it's kind of possible, I guess. He was attacking women, young women. Um, the M.O. does not match up to Jack the Ripper in any way, shape, or form that I can tell. Um, aside from, like I said, the young women. But Spring Hill Jack never actually killed anyone. He ran off. He did it in areas where there were witnesses, which do not seem to me to indicate Jack the Ripper, who, as we all know, was never caught. So, Spring Hill Jack, in conclusion to this, seems to be a very unique either cryptid or entity. Because some people think it was some sort of cryptid. Some people think it was a man in a costume that just wanted to get his jollies by attacking women. Others, especially with the glowing eyes and the blue flame mouth spewing stuff. Um, the biggest consensus overall is that it was some kind of demonic entity which all the elements put together, I could kind of see that to a degree. Um, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense in the fact that it's so sporadic and so just random as far as his sightings and things like that. And the, the thing that really strikes me as strangest is the 1938 U.S. appearance. It was all within a year or the same year and that was the only time he's been spotted anywhere other than in... England, in different parts of England, primarily London and Sheffield and Liverpool, with a few other varied reports in other areas. But it seems like he'll appear, work, do some sightings for within a couple years, or within a two years span, and then disappear for anywhere from three years to 30 years or more. Um, up to almost 40 years at a time sometimes. Um, so there's no real as far as there's no real pattern that i can find um i have been trying to but i've been having difficulties in locating any sort of either supernatural or paranormal or geographical um anomalies that correspond to his appearances be it something that brings him out or something that is caused by him being around but overall if I do find any more information, as I said, I will make additional videos to document it. But as of right now, everything that I can find, it's just a hit and miss kind of cat and mouse game of him just showing up whenever he feels like it. And nobody really knows any more information than that. And it's just a very, very interesting and peculiar presence or entity. So in conclusion, Spring Hill Jack is probably one of the bigger mysteries that still, up till five years ago, have been spotted very infrequently, um, mostly in England. Um, very little more is known about the origin, like virtually nothing is known about the origins of this creature, character, entity, whatever. Hopefully, without anyone being harmed, we might get more reports, hopefully soon, of more sightings of this, because that would be very very interesting to me and I would definitely love if someone were actually able to capture footage or at least images of Spring Hill Jack so we can get an idea of what we're dealing with. Um, as far as I can tell there have been no images of any sightings of Spring Hill Jack but hopefully with the rise of popularity of GoPros and dash cams and things of that sort maybe one day here soon we might get to see something of Spring Hill Jack. Um, thank you for watching my video tonight. Don't forget to check out the links in the description and like, comment, share, subscribe. Uh, thank you guys very much and hopefully I'll see you quite a bit sooner on my next video than I did on this one to the last. Have a good night.